in analysis, very often we deal with functions, smooth functions, continuous functions, differentiable functions, and so on. And often, we like to compose these functions when the codomains and domains match. As a result, we'll get diagrams. So it's important to understand exactly what a diagram is. So the definition of a diagram, every mathematical object is usually defined in terms of data satisfying a bunch of conditions. So in this case, a diagram consists of two pieces of data. The first one is a set of sets, a set x of sets x1 through xn, and another set, so here where xi is a set for all i. And the second thing it consists of is another set. And this is going to be a set of functions between these xi's and xj's. And there's no, rest there's no constraint on what kind of functions we can have or how many, uh, as long as it's a, f it's a, well, in this case, we're going to have a finite number. So each of these sets are finite sets. And that's all it is. And so we draw such a diagram, for instance, explicitly, if we know how many pieces there are in the diagram. And so these are, for instance, we have x, x1 through x6. And we can have a bunch of arrows going between them. And these arrows represent functions. And not every pair of sets necessarily has to have a function between them when we talk about a particular diagram. If you notice, we can actually go from one set to another by following several of these arrows. And this leads to the definition of a path inside of a diagram. So another definition is a path in a diagram such as the one we have here, let's call this set F, for example, a path consists of a subset. Let's call this P for path. It's a subset of F and let's denote the elements of this subset as f1 through fm, let's say. This subscript need not be the same as this subscript, such that so let me draw this out a little bit. The source of fj is the target of f j minus 1 for all j from 2 up to m. So what does a path look like? Let's take a look at our example here. One path, for instance, is the function from x1 to x3 and then the function from x1 to x4. That's an example of a path because the target of the first arrow is the source of this second one. Another example of a path is this one, the one from x1 to x2 to x4. Let me draw those a little bit more clearly so that you can distinguish the two the two paths. Now, the last concept that's important for considering diagrams of sets is when they commute. So what does that mean? A diagram 
such as the one that we have here, a diagram commutes whenever whenever the following condition holds whenever for any two paths let's call them P F1 up to Fm and Q let's call them G1 up to GK for any two paths with the condition that the source of F1 is also the source of G1 and if the target of GK is the target of FK. Sorry, is FM. So let's again look at, so if for any two paths, correct. So this condition has to be satisfied for every pair of paths. So let's look at this diagram that we have here. This diagram commutes if this happens for every single path. So far I've only drawn two paths. This one, and notice that the source of this path in pink is the same as the source of this path in blue. And the targets also match up. The target is x4. So this diagram would have to commute, which means that this composition of functions And this composition of functions are exactly equal. So let me finish this. I actually didn't finish the definition here. If for any two paths satisfying this condition, then this composition equals that one. So let me write that out. It's the last one, Fm composed with F1 equals Gk composed with G1. So in this diagram, there's actually another path, for instance, that we can look at. So another one of the paths is the one from x2 to x1, and then it follows the red path from x1 to x3 and from x3 to x4. So this path is this. Uh, consists of these three arrows. And then the next path is the one just from x2 to x4. So this also has to commute, which means that this composition has to equal this one as well. So every single path, for every pair of paths where the source and targets match, you have to ask that those two functions, once you compose them, are equal. And when that condition holds, that means that you have a diagram that commutes. And we'll see why this is important throughout the entire course. When we talk about the chain rule, when we talk about products and different functions on Euclidean space, it's very important to keep track of when certain diagrams commute. So in the next video, we'll talk about products.